Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you for joining me on another painting video. I'm using a uh, 10 by 14 arches, 140 pound. It's 100% cotton paper. I've got my Ron Ranson brush and I'm starting to just wet down the paper. Just until you see a sheen on the sheet. And we're just going to be making some stuff up as we go along, but I thought I'd do something a little different. And we're just going to look at a more simplified way, possibly, to do the sky. If your approach hasn't been working for you, then we're going to do, try this. We're just going to splotch in, as I've done already, some yellow. And this is uh, Nickel Azo yellow, but you can use any yellow. If it's too bright for you, you can use a raw sienna or a yellow ochre. You can use a cad yellow hue. You can use just about anything you want for this. So the point is, is to get some light areas in the sky. Now we're coming back in with some ultramarine blue. And I'm just splotching this in in various areas. I, I'm not being particular about it. Just splotching it in. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to dab that in. And finally, I'm going to give it a spray with my spray bottle and then I'm going to come back in with a synthetic soft brush you can use any soft brush you like um, you can use this style which is a flat but it may streak a little bit more so I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to go and I'm going to pick up my bushier Frank Clark goat hair brush and I like a, a brush that's got a lot of bristles on it for this and we're just going to blend in the colors that we already have. This works if your paper is semi-wet. At this point, it shouldn't be so wet that it's running. Just enough to be able to still move paint around and blend. So now you can see those heavy colors we put in are now becoming softer. They're blending with the area around it. And I'm being careful not to disturb too much of that yellow that's in the back there. That's going to be a little bit of my, my brightness area there. Now you can make those shapes in the sky any way you want. Experiment with them. Do it however. Whatever makes you happy. And now I'm just coming in with a, again, this brush should be somewhat clean or mostly clean, mostly dry. Um, I'm just blending in a little bit more. It'll take out a little bit of color, which is okay. And if you want to take out even a little more color, you can either re-wet it. You can come in with a slightly damper brush and work those areas. Ultimately, we're going to have something against the backdrop, so we don't want to get too fussy over the back, the background. And again, I'm just making this up as I go along. There's, I had nothing in mind when I came in except that I wanted to do this type of sky. So this is the wet brush, and this is just to remove some paint. And when it dries, it will have this sort of effect of just varying tones throughout the sky it might look like a, some wispy clouds but it's not going to dry you have to trust the process So this is what we have. I've given it a little spray, and I, I don't mind the little droplet effect. I think it gives it a little fantasy element of a look. So now the decision time comes in. What are we going to put against this backdrop? Now I've let this. I'm going to let this dry in between. You can let it dry. Go take a break. You can use a hair dryer if you like. But I'm going to come in here now with the same colors. By the way, we're using ultramarine blue, Payne's gray. And the, this one is Nickel Azo Yellow, and if I'm saying that right. And they're from the Core Paints, the Q-O-R Core Paints. This is a pretty dark mountain here. And I just felt like right in the middle was a good place with the light coming down. 
you can make trees for the background, whatever you like now. It's pretty heavy, so I'm going to give this a nice spray with the spray bottle. I don't mind if it runs a little bit. I don't mind if it weakens up some areas. Okay, so I'm just taking a little bit of a paper towel and it's a dry paper towel and I'm just dabbing away some of the paint at the bottom that gives it sort of that misty, faded look. Otherwise it'll be too solid blending into whatever it is that you put underneath. And I'm just gonna go a little higher on this, on this middle peak here. I don't wanna fuss at it too much, but I don't wanna really a mountain that looks too fake either because of the pointy shape of it. And again, don't get caught up in being fussy with the mountain because, well, if you're going to come back and do what I do and add some white to it, um, it really doesn't matter. Now, you could take a card like this and you can scrape in and you can leave it like that and not use any white. Up to you. I sort of scrape in and sometimes if I say, well, I'm going to put white anyway or if it looks really great with the scraping, I'll leave that. And I just gave it a little spray just to, to blend that in. The little speckles of water that hit the mountain too, they just I, I just like that effect. Again, dabbing in with a little paper towel just to keep that blended. And now we're going to come in and we're going to put some foliage below. This is again the same three colors we're using. The Nickel Azo Yellow, Payne's Gray, and Ultramarine Blue. So we're, we're not going to be too fussy with the shape. We're just kind of mashing in some color. So now I'm taking my white gouache and I'm dabbing in just above the foliage. And then I'm spraying it with my spray bottle because I want to let that run down into the foliage below. It's going to create a misty effect and it's going to shape the trees ultimately. I've done a little I've overdone it a little bit, but that's okay. You can see kind of what I was going for. And now I'm just going to apply some white to the mountain and just create some snow on the mountain. Again, you don't have to do this, but uh, I enjoy it. A lot of this will fade, so um, it will, I'll end up doing this a couple of times. We want to let those shadow sides show through that's important so we don't want to just cover up the whole thing with white if you do and there's some areas here that I have I'll show you how to reclaim a bit of that when white gets mixed in it creates a gray so for that aspect it could be challenging once you put white on your paper So I'm just kind of blending in a little bit of extra white there. Just doing a little blending. Coming back in with the smaller Frank Clark goat hair brush. He calls it the baby goat here. And now I'm just coming in with a little, my small fan brush. 
small cheap fan brush with darker colors the ultramarine blue and Payne's gray and I'm just redefining those shadows and you've got to use a pretty good amount of paint there to overcome the white that's there Again, I'm taking the smaller goat hair brush and just blending that in. And I will likely use white one more time to redefine the heaviest snowy areas of the peaks. Now you can also paint in a way that you leave the white for the mountain. A lot of people do that. Um, I want to paint, so, <laughs> and I enjoy using the white. To me, it looks like snow, so that's why I do it the way I do it. So I'm redefining the bushes, putting a little more heavier heavier uh, color on and now I'm taking my brush while it's still wet my fan brush and I'm pulling up on the paint and that's going to create pointy looking trees <clears throat> and again just blending that in pulling that down That'll make for a nice reflection. You can see here as we pull in, see how the white has come around the trees and we have a sort of a uh, misty effect and we have the pointy trees. And again, just pulling up on those I like the fan brush for that. The bristles are ap further apart. And it's really become a go-to brush for me. So first and foremost would be the Ron Ranson Hake or Hake brush, as it's properly pronounced, so no one yells at me. And I also use the Frank Clark bushier, large goat hair brush for blending. I like to use a synthetic brush as well for blending. And then I'll use the fan brush and a rigger brush. But I don't use the rigger brush on this painting. And a flat brush. I think that really covers all the brushes that you'll need for this technique. You can use rounds. I've just not really used round brushes. Um, to me, they just uh, lend to getting more detail oriented. So I'm going to put a nice pine tree off to the right here. We need a tree somewhere. So we're going to do a nice pine tree. And again, with the small fan brush, still the same three colors. Those are the only three colors used here and the white gouache. And they're core colors and M. Graham's Titanium White Gouache. So there we have our pine and I'm bringing it down. I want to bring it down about halfway, giving it a little spray so that there's some blending happening and then I'm just going to pull down some color for the sort of shadowy reflection, whatever the combination of the two.
And then what I'll do is for the water is we'll kind of wash it with just plain water and blend it again. But now I'm going to take my card and I'm scraping in some land mass underneath the trees to divide the trees from the water. Um, you can use brown for this if you want or some soil color, but uh, I'm just going to scrape it in. Make it very simple, just straight across, and it'll create some interesting light. And then we'll put some darker shadows underneath where the landmass is, just to ex accent the scraping areas. And you know, while I'm here, I've just looked at these little background colors here, and it just looks like little mountains in the back, so add a little white to that. And I keep it light. I don't want it to stand out more than the foreground, but make it look like there's some other hills in the background here. give that a spray kind of blend that a little bit she's in a flat brush here just honestly I just grabbed it and <laughs> there was no real reason for it And just pulling down we had a little bit of white still on that brush so my last little clip got I don't know what happened to it but uh, right underneath I put a little bit of white this is all I really did underneath I, I put some some thick white um, and I added a little white to the mountain top like I said I would do and then I added a streak across the water. So that's it for this video. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it.